Okay. Let's go for this. Okay. This movie came out in 1990. I said on the on the text thread, they don't make movies like this anymore. And Chris's response today was what? Uh, I don't know that they ever did. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I don't know that they really ever have since or before made a movie like this. It's a one of one. It is a dirty cop movie crossed with... I don't know. Eyes a psychosexual, <laughs> Stanley Kirk. cuck thriller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, a dirty cop, when you say dirty cop, not just dirty cop in his profession. Yeah. The dirtiest, filthiest cop ever. Yeah. I'm talking about like, this guy is the most dangerous dick that has ever existed on film. It's, he's And he, Richard Gere wears it so well. Like, I don't remember this movie being as unhinged. I've seen this movie a bunch of times. We're watching it as an adult. Yeah. It was a completely different experience, man. It's, it's like, like, hey, Dennis Peck's going to drive your wife home. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get out of the car. <laughs> and no woman could resist. It yeah. was just a matter of time before Dennis Peck is railing your wife and We've making you literally watch. Literally named Peck. Right. Pecker Peck. We've been circling this one for a while, partially like as a, as a mutual dare, I think. Right? Yeah. And when you're watching it, this is like a special genre of film, which is the look behind you. Because you're like, is anybody watching me watch this movie? <laughs> yeah. Right. And mo make sure nobody can hear you watching this movie because you will get a lot of, what the fuck did he just say? Right, like right. from the other room, if you're watching this on TV. When I was a kid, I was like, I'm not supposed to be watching this. And yeah. now that I'm in my 40s, I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be watching this. You know, I I didn't even know they were talking like this in 1990. Because a lot of these people were. We've done so many 90s movies. They weren't. So a lot of this talk is is up now because we're so porn obsessed because everybody has like a little thousand dollar pornographic machine that they walk around with at all times. I don't know if you guys use it for different things than I do, but that's what it is for me. What's going on right now? But, but anyway. <laughs> so the Vision Pro is really the impacted Vision Pro has changed it, right? <laughs> New Horizons. But like the way he's even talking... <laughs> So, uh, we could do a whole pot on it, guys. You're clicking around. Kalika's yeah. like, nobody else. Kalika's like, what are you doing? I'm, you're grabbing for it. I'm like, nothing. Play with that. Yeah. Like, Play with, yeah. Read my emails. Um, but Too high safety. <laughs> but like this movie, like the way he's talking to him, he's talking to him like the foulest porn crazy sex freak ever. And I just don't remember that being in a lot of movies in the late 80s, early 90s that I grew up watching, man. Where is this in the Dirty Cop movie pantheon for you, CR? It's pretty high up Can there. I give you some possibilities? Please. I mean, Departed and Training Day, I think, are in oh, yeah, there. For sure. Like, those have to be in there. Those are like the magic and bird. I, for me, Copland's in there. Uh-huh. Even though we already did on the rewatchables, I love that movie. I was watching it a couple of weeks ago. I, I'm just Leota in that movie. I just can't get enough of. I mean, you have to go back to some of the '70s classics. Well, I was going to say in this one, Serpico. Serpico, yeah. Connection, yeah. Connection. What else do you have? I mean, there's so many great, great like like the uh, the Seven Ups, the the Roy Scheider movie oh, that's yeah. kind of like French Connection adjacent has always been one of my favorites. Like, there was not a clean cop in the 70s. They, they made movies about a cop. It was like he was on the take or he was up against a bunch of cops who were. He was doing so many dirty things. Uh, Prince of the City is another great dirty cop movie. So, yeah, those are, those are mine. Can I read you the Wikipedia? Just one sentence. Sure. About this movie. This is when they have the, where they describe the plot. Meanwhile, Peck not only has a widespread web of corruption based on extortion, favors to cops and criminals alike, and, and complicit security. dealings with pimps, <laughs> he also moonlights as a hitman. <laughs> it's in one sentence. Hitman deals with pimps, cops, criminals, and a wide web of corruption. But and that doesn't even say the whole story. No. Deals with pimps, but unclear how? Like, I, I thought maybe he was a pimp at some point. He said that the pimp, that the girl was his snitch. Unclear his relationship with pimps and how. They seem he, to get along really well, though. Like, he's hanging out at that at food yeah, stand no, all the time. No, he's one them. of them. Yeah. But, like, what's the relationship about? I, Probably information and Yeah, you guys get to operate them. freely and as has long as you sex feed me with info. all of the, the working girls. Well, he, I mean, he clearly has sex multiple times a day. Yeah. He's just a walking Woody. Right. Multiple times a day, multiple different people. Like, that was CR's favorite part when he goes to see his ex-wife. 
He's like, what's it? Where are you going now? I got to pick up our son at 12. And he's <laughs> I got to like, go get really? Ethan at noon. And he just opens the door. He's and like, they, let's, let's, get one way, let's get a stunt one in. Once again, no one can resist Every no. woman he sees, it's yeah. five minutes before he. Fucks so this her. is the yeah. this is the magic trick of the movie. Is that it's a really engaging LA crime movie. You know, it's like it's it's up there with like Live and Die in LA, of like a really cool preheat LA yeah. crime flick. But the gear thing is out of control. Like the the idea that this is seriously the devil. It's the Antichrist version of Philip Rivers. You know, it's like the, <laughs> he's got nine children. Right? Yeah, and. He's rolling around Los Angeles, and the problem with it is that you can kind of see it. You can yeah. kind of see he's so charismatic in almost every interaction he has with somebody. Even when he's like trolling Andy Garcia to the point of a fist fight, mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, two, you two know fist fights. So there's two scenes. the The first scene is where I'm looking at him like, oh, so there's a scene and it's breakfast time. Yeah, and it's his ridiculously beautiful new wife played by Annabella Sciorra. Yeah. Who is a, just... A rewatchable's favorite. Just amazingly beautiful, Heather. right? Heather. It, On her way, 15 years away from selling cars and hooking with, up with, with Tony, Tony Soprano. But only a couple years away from being a very, very prominent figure in the lives of a lot of young black adolescent males. Jungle Fever. Oh, yeah. And hand that rocks the cradle. Hand that rocks the cradle, right? Un- unable to understand why everything has gone wrong since right. the nanny showed up. Um, and then, so he's in there, and his ex-wife walks in, kisses her. She's beautiful. On the mouth. On like the mouth. Full on the lips. Whole deal. And for a second, you're like, okay, which person is he in a relationship with? And you look at him like, that's the type of motherfucker who could probably pull that off. Yeah. Yeah. Like Richard Gere. She's like, I have a date. He's like, what? My ex-wife my, has a date? My ex-wife <laughs> has a date. Like, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. then the other scene is, when he's in, when he's going back and forth with Dorian, who's played by Michael Beach. Yeah. And, Boston Zone. Um, he pushes him to the ground. When he gets up, he's like, you still love me. You still love me. You're like, that's the kind of asshole yeah. charisma that makes a guy like that the leader of his squad or whatever. I I was going to do this later. I'll do it now. I think this is his best performance in a movie. I agree. It's this and it's Officer and a Gentleman, I mean, probably in the final two. Some would say Gigolo, but I don't think... Gigolo's a charisma movie, it's, but he's doing more in this. And yeah. then Pretty Woman, he pulls off, what he pulls off of Pretty Woman is like uh, a little bit hard to do. Pulls where, off aloof, charming, uh, mysterious. He's a cutthroat billionaire who's basically... That, Wait, looking for love, yeah. But also when that scene, when he, when he treats her like, when she says, "You, I've never treated you like a hooker. And she's like, you just did. Yeah. And even then, you're like, I still like this guy. Yeah. I hope they work it yeah, out. Yeah, he can get away with almost anything because of like my mom's favorite yes, actor. Right. Yeah. This is his uh, his favorite of his own movies. Is that true? Yeah. What well, was at the time? Like around the time. Well, this was the Richard Keir comeback season, 1990. He is this and Pretty Woman. He's coming off. We talked about this when we did Officer and a Gentleman. Does Officer and a Gentleman and goes on an eight year fucking bender of just bombs. Yeah. And it's like King David and all these movies that just don't work. And then by 1990, he is like the eighth choice for every movie after the other seven people have passed. Somehow he gets internal affairs pretty well. Well, it's the same thing. I think it, it I goes. think a lot of people pass on internal affairs. Yeah. And you can see why. I mean, the the, the so content is pretty toxic. Like, but you know what toxic. else happens in 1990, Van? What? The Richard Gere comeback year meets the Andy Garcia sons. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's happening. Because we have this and we have Godfather 3, Godfather which yeah. gets nominated for supporting actor. He's awesome in it. He's fantastic uh, in Coming off Black Rain, and uh-huh. this is like, we think this is going to be one of the big actors of the 90s. Yeah. I feel like he had that in common with Ray Liotta, which I, I always thought that Ray Liotta, with the looks, the charm, the acting chops, I always wor- wondered why Ray Liotta didn't break through to the next level of Hollywood star. And it's kind of the same thing with a- Andy Garcia. Fantastic, fantastic career from Andy Garcia, but never quite became the guy on the next level that I he thought was he the was one. He's to. It's a one movie away. Right. Syndrome. Yeah. We talked about this a little with when we were talking about Rebecca De Mornay last week and actresses is a little more complicated. But with the actors, sometimes... They, they just never had that one last part. Like, Costner had no way out. 
And it's like, oh, Costner, here we go. But then he had Field of Dreams. And but then it's also Durham. Yeah, and then, then, then Dances with Wolves. And then like it he, just kept yeah. going. And you have to also move from the young supporting actor role or the, you know, like the basically the foil to the star to the star. And Garcia had a, a harder time doing that, I think. Like he I was, wonder how much, how much of it was the Latino thing. Could just be. people being afraid to put him. Because I feel like he could have played 80% of the Kevin Costner parts. Sure. Yeah. But Were well, there my, roles for him to play is what you're saying? Yeah. My yeah. thing is, if you're doing scouting combine for, like we're in NFL draft season now, if you're doing scouting combine for what you'd want from an A-list actor to lead a movie, he checks every box. Mm. And I was, I, I mean, I was, I remember when he got beheaded in Black Rain. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But he's like, oh no. He's, he's they in, got him. You can see it in The Untouchables. When he first yeah. pops up in The Untouchables, you're like, oh my God, this guy's like electric. He's going up against everybody in this movie. He's going up against Connery. He goes toe to toe with him. What's cool about this movie is I feel like him and Gear are at the peak of their powers. And the two characters, they just have a chemistry. There's a lot of backstory with that that we'll get to. But you just feel like they, they're competing for the movie in some ways. Like, who whose movie is this? But then the two characters are competing against each other. There's the sexual stuff. Why do you think more movies don't do this with male actors where that, like... I could fuck your wife well, if that's, I wanted to. Like the that, sexual that, component of movies has been almost completely removed. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, there's debates now about whether or not movies should have love scenes. But I, even right. beyond that, yeah. like, I don't even really think that there's a lot of like, it, it, I don't really think that films like contemporary mainstream movies really get too deeply into like people's sex, sexual pathologies, yeah. I guess. Like the like, what's going on with your marriage kind of dialogue yeah. and somebody using that as a weapon to be like, oh, there's something here. Now I'm going to really twist it. It's a lot more complicated now but for obviously a lot of societal and cultural reasons. But I would also say this, with what you're talking about, with the guys and the I'm fucking your wife type of thing, think about this movie and the dynamic of the male leads. You have three fantastic looking male leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have... Billy Baldwin, um, and then you have uh, Andy Garcia, and you have Richard Gere. Richard Gere is the guy who can fuck both of their wives. <laughs> he like, does. Oh, and, he, he, does one. He's he does, he does one. He was yeah. on way for the second one. Yeah. He thought that it was going to happen. She looks fantastic in this yeah. movie too. So that in and of itself, to play that role, to like play the cook and like this another guy be the Lothario. A lot of those leading man type guys, when they're in there, they don't want to really do that. Like that, you're ceding a sort of sexual power that a leading man should have to another actor, and it's kind of difficult. Yeah, for Cruz a lot of guys isn't to signing do. up for this. He's no. not gonna. He, he would play. Wait, so Richard Gere's gonna talk about fucking my wife? And no, I'm no. not doing that. Right, and then not only talk about fucking him, but gonna drive you so crazy <laughs> that you're gonna believe that it fucking happens with the whole little flashback and all mm. of that stuff. Yeah, he's just gonna get in your mind like that. It's 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 tougher for male leads to do that. I feel like. Well, they reportedly did not get along when they were filming this movie, and um, I was, like that. I feel like you can feel that in the elevator scene. I think Gear got a couple extras in, <laughs> and then <laughs> in the research. Not positive it's true, but it seems too weird not to be true. Garcia refused to attend the rap party. Interesting. Oh, I thought you were about to say in the research, it appears to be true that Gear fucked Garcia's girl. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> really? Just to get in character. Just to get in character. It's a method actor. <laughs> right. Um, also, 1990, Dirty Cops. This is kind of the, we're about to hit, especially in LA, we're about to hit of five-year stretch there where this becomes the dominant theme, not only in L.A., but in the country. Yep. And this movie's early on it. And this is kind of the end of the Dirty Cops as popcorn entertainment era. Yeah, when does it start? Like, I mean... It sh Rodney King shifts it. Yeah, after I mean, that, it changes like, you right can't, after even that. You colors, can't do it quite this way. Even Colors has it, like, th there is, like, something redeemable about... You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, they're... they're in colors, they're more renegade yeah. cops than they are dirty cops because they still have some cop type ethos. Yes, but post Rodney colors has not aged well. No, I know colors not will not be on the rewatchables. <laughs> like, not which at is all. really saying something because <laughs> we're doing it. Yeah, affairs. right. The colors is like, woo. but like once we really started to interrogate policing in a real way, these movies kind of went. I mean, Training Day is is the is the the biggest one since that time, but these movies kind of changed a little yeah. bit. Training Day is in a completely different prism, and it knows it. This movie's kind of like, ah, it's fun to watch Richard Gere be a dirty cop. We should have more dirty cop movies. And then three years later, we're like, eh. I was rooting for him. Yeah. 
I like I, it, it, when See, it, eight kids to pay for. Yeah, eight kids. Go get when, yours, Richard. When the shit happens with the van and the guy, I was like, God damn, not my man Peck. What is Peck gonna do now? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. he, like, what, like what, what, who is Peck gonna uh, have to fuck to get out of this right. situation? He's gotta hit up another pimp. He's gotta right. like have sex with the mayor's wife. Right. His sentence commuted. This movie has lines like. You've had three 181s for excessive forces in the last 10 months. You're wearing a hole in the carpet. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, why can't Billy Baldwin just stop with the excessive force <laughs> stuff? Mm -hmm. Five years later, that's out the window. But I do really like dirty cop movies. Like, I actually don't feel like we've had enough. Uh, well, I, I think that... Because th this is like the last line of defense for us, right? So when they're going sideways... To me, it's just interesting as a viewer. There's so many different ways that could go. Like, has there been a great dirty cop TV show? Well, and we own the city is is pretty great. The Shield. The, the, no, the know. Shield. They're not dirty in the Shield. Once again, yeah, they're pretty yeah, yeah, dirty yeah, in the yeah, Shield. The, the Shield. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're dirty. I guess <laughs> the Shield's the closest, right? We own the city was only six episodes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that there's like uh, there's aspects of like the dirty cop thing in a lot of shows, but it just I think TV tends to do more procedurals. Yeah. So you tend to do more law and order type of things, like rather than like let's do an expose on like I mean the wire and so that's what I was about to bring up. Yeah. So the uh, wire, the you wouldn't see the cop. You wouldn't say that the cops are dirty in the wire. Yeah. But they beat the dog shit out of suspects. Yeah. yeah. At the drop of a hat, right? They'll plant a little evidence when they have to. You see a couple. You see Hurricane Carver take some money. The whole not so they're more human than they are police, which makes the True. lens that you look at them through a little bit different. Yeah, that's a good point. Billy Baldwin? Another, Internal another Affairs. almost got there. Internal Affairs, 1990. Flatliners, 1990. Backdraft, 91. Three of Hearts, 93, which I will still defend. That's a good movie. And then Sliver, which was just in the news because he had a back and forth with Sharon Stone. Hollywood gave him a four-year window Give him a shot. Prove it to us. A little like Kenny Pickett on the Steelers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. We gave Fuck. you two years. We're trading to the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, Billy Baldwin got traded to the Eagles after Sliver was over, and his brother kind of took the spot. I always liked him. But something must have been missing in the Billy Baldwin package. But you know, I always thought I liked him during the stretch. I, he might just be too cute. Mm. Billy Baldwin might just be too... When they're like, oh, man, Van... You're coked out. I'm like, is he? He seems like he looks great. Right. He, 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 His like, eyes weren't sunken in enough. No, mm. I mean, he just like, you can't mess, you can't scuff that diamond up. Right. You know, like back then, like, so he does this, but flatliners and backdraft, right? And yeah. And it's pretty much, yeah. Then fair game comes around at some point. That's when the wheels come and off. That, yeah, because w she was so hot at that point. Yeah. She's like one of the worst actresses that's ever been committed to film. Right. But it's tough. But she was so hot at that point. If that movie doesn't get across the finish line, then people aren't interested in, see, in seeing Billy Baldwin uh, in, in any real way for like a blockbuster type of movie. I do wonder whether or not, just to quickly go back to your dirty cop. Did Alec Baldwin market correct Billy Baldwin? Uh, Alec was Alec Baldwin they were, doesn't they were exist? They were like parallel yeah, track. Alec, I think Alec's before Billy. Alec, Alec is, is before in, Billy. Is in Do you think like, ever thought about, man, if Alec Baldwin wasn't here, I would have gotten some great roles? I could sure have been the doctor in Malice. That. Alec actually has talked about this before. He was like, at one point, Billy was the hot Baldwin brother. And that that's the point that Alec starts. Because, so, you know, I think Malice, when does Malice come out? Like right around 92, here. 93. Yeah, yeah, so, Malice is good. Yeah, Malice is fantastic. Yeah. So, like, Alec Baldwin is probably the more serious Baldwin brother, even during that time. But he was going season. in the 86, 87 range. It'd be like, if we had, uh, I don't know, Daniel Ryan working for us, <laughs> your older brother. <laughs> and I had been doing the rewatchables with him because he loved Heat. Yeah. And you're like, man, I love Heat too. <laughs> Why did Dan Daniel Ryan get to do it? That could have been me. Uh, uh, do you think that Bad Lieutenant pretty much ends the oh, dirty that's cop a good movies? One. Did Bad you Lieutenant like Bad Lieutenant? Movie. Well, I think it's the dirtiest cop that's ever lived. I That one went too far for me. I know some people love it, but that's not a rewatchable. It's a for fun me. movie. It's not a fun. It's it's not a. It's just so absurd. It tried too hard to be deranged. Like yeah. there's a line. It that's works. what I love about this movie <laughs> is deranged, but it doesn't try too hard. Uh, written by Henry Bean. Oh, I forgot with uh, Billy Baldwin. He plays a guy named Van. Van Stretch. Van Stretch. That's another reason why. How this, have I never called you Van Stretch? This movie like 
spoke to me as a kid because I never got to see anybody named Van in the see, movie. See, because one of my one of my unanswerable questions for this movie was: Is it Van Stretch like Van Lathan, or is it Van Stretch like Keith Van Horn? And they just don't call him by his first name. They call him Van a uh, couple of times. No, I think his name's Van. Okay, Stretch. I think his name is Van. So how many Stretch. movie Vans have there been? Not not very many. Bro. Van Wilder. Van Wilder's one. And, they, and by the way, all throughout college, they called me Van Wilder. You wilder yeah. than Van Wilder. Oh, my God. You wilder than Would Van you Wilder. rather be called Van Wilder or Van Stretch? Got to be Van Wilder. Okay. Because Van Stretch <laughs> got cooked hard. So there's no, like, Van Johnson. It that always said you have to add, like, the weird last name, too. It's got to be Van Wilder or Van Stretch. Van Stretch. Like, Van Smith. It doesn't work. Yeah. This movie was written by Henry Bean and directed by Mike Figgis. Yeah. Who went on through leaving Las, leaving Vegas, Las Vegas and pretty strange last twenty years for Mike. Yeah, uh, a kind Might of have gone against Scientology a little, and uh, right, some, some things happened. So, uh, Figus is kind of an interesting. I'll do the fantasy thing where it's like I'll I'll just say like he's like an interesting Hollywood director who was very like provocative within the system, so would do these genre movies, but then really push push the boundaries of like what he could get away with within those movies. There's not a right. lot of guys like him, like maybe Neil Jordan or somebody like that, but a very, very used a lot of different techniques like filmmaking wise. And then also obviously was very interested in sexual psychology. Stuff. This movie is very well done for 1990. I mean, it's 34 sure. years old, but it's very, uh, it feels somewhat modern. Yeah. I really? Think. Honestly, the only stuff that's like dated is the shootout. Well, and this and the phones. Yeah. And the phones. Cord, cord phones are very prominent in this movie. Well, they also they have the they also have the the fucking classic antenna cordless phone. Oh, he, oh yeah, yeah, That's like the, the Gordon Gecko phone. The, yeah, the classic. He, if you watch this movie and you put it next to uh, leaving Las Vegas, you could tell that they have the same DNA. Mm -hmm. Desperate sex, <laughs> desperate, almost violent. Remember the one part of leaving Las Vegas where she's walking on broken glass? Yeah. You, you, like the whole nine, like you you could tell. He's They're both a, set in a place that's supposed to be full of promise, but is in fact, in full, fact of like full of like sin and desperation yeah. and all of that Should stuff. Should we do leaving Las Vegas for rock bottom month? <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the amount Las of Vegas, months, hey, monster yo, ball. The amount of months you have on the stove hey, right monsters now. Monster's ball. Yeah. Find, find me a movie that's more rock bottom. Like leaving Las Vegas might be the number Requiem one. Requiem for a dream? That's pretty rock bottom. But isn't there some redemption in that? No. In Requiem Craig, for who's Dream? the sponsor for Rock Bottom Month? <laughs> <laughs> probably, not, probably not people lining up. Boeing? <laughs> Athletic <laughs> Dream? Jesus Christ, Craig! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it's Rock Bottom Month! Buy the dip! Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. That's great. Great stuff, Craig. Mm -hmm. Uh... $50 million budget for this movie made $47.7 million. It did well. I saw it in the theater. And then was a cable, somehow, a cable mainstay. It's on all It was the one time. of the worst edited for TNT movies yeah. possible. Because mm -hmm. Dennis Peck is just absolutely but they would di keep diluted Dennis Peck. The black and white fever dream footage in there. Yeah. And I was always like, like did I miss a scene that this is flashing back to? You mm. don't understand. I, did, I was, that always confused me when I was a kid. So Ebert, I couldn't find a review, but I did find his at the movies with Cisco. Oh, good. And they both loved it. And Ebert said, it's really a movie about personalities. It's not just a cop movie that plugs in the usual elements from other cop movies. This is a good movie. Gear is brilliant. It's so barely I'm say a either cop three or three and a half stars for for Raj. Don't give me a sub on your bill. It's barely a cop movie. It's, it really yeah. is. It, it's, it's it's hard to even explain what law enforcement is at stake. It's like yeah. IAD is investigating this guy and then when when Van gets murdered, they think they have the witness who was the second guy at the shooting. And like that's essentially the the cop part of the sh the movie. This movie could have been like you remember how in Ghost uh what's his name's character? What's the guy that was fucking Kerry Washington on Scandal? Oh, Tony Go Tony yeah. Goldman. Goldman. Like okay. Uh, by the way, I didn't mean that literally. Although there is there is talk, but it, <laughs> but but um, they have gone to some parties, so. right? Um, so remember how in Ghost he was the dirty banker that yeah. was funneling money for the drug dealer, or whatever. Yeah. This would be the same movie with those two guys, with in a completely different. The cop element of this is not as necessary as you would think, because it's a movie about power, yeah, manipulation. 
about like you know usury and all of that stuff the the police stuff is just how these guys meet it's a great turn because it starts out being literally about internal affairs department of the police department and like you get introduced and Lori Metcalf walks him through all the exposition of like we're ID and we do this and this is the this is what we have to look out for and this is what yeah. people are going to think of you and you're like okay it's going to be a cop movie and then the internal affairs actually turns out being like the inner workings of people's marriages oh, yep. and sex lives this was a, an era of movie cuz we always talk about the from hell i guess you could say this is cop from hell but not really yeah. but there's like cuz also bad influence with Rob Lowe and James Spader comes out this year that movie's kind of unhinged too, uh -huh. where he's just like decided to try to ruin his life. But this eighty nine to ninety one stretch, there's even just a I lot of weird movies, even through like single white female, like yeah, it that's keeps going one. into like ninety two, where you're like, what the fuck? This is really dark. You know? Yeah, and it was like the sex. There wasn't necessarily a sex scene, but there was weird sex stuff. Mm -hmm. Like single white female has that scene when she, the Bridget Fonda, hears the noises and she opens the door and thinks she's with. With a guy, and the girl rolls over, and she was by herself, and she's like, ah. I am so glad that this came up. Thank you. I figured it might be in your wheelhouse. I'll tell you, I love single white female. Okay. okay. You're on the list <laughs> yeah. when we do single white female. Love single white female. Court and I were just arguing with about this. Oscar winner. Oscar, Oscar winner. winner. Was that an Oscar winner name drop? <laughs> no. Uh, it, 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 is single white female, just real quick detour, is that an erotic thriller? Yes. In a way, yeah. yeah. See, I don't think so. Because as in an erotic thriller, doesn't sex have to be a, a real integral part of the I plot? think that or the obsession borders on sexual. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. When we do single white female, I get to do my impression of the guy from Wings getting a blowjob and realizing it's, <laughs> it's not Bridget Fonda. That it's not his girl. Oh my Peter God. Walker. Yeah. Want me to break it out now? <laughs> yeah. No, I'll do, it. I'll do it when we do it. I'll, I'm going to tell her myself. It's one of my best 90s impersonations. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that movie is absolutely insane. Do any of your 90s impersonations not involve an orgasm? <laughs> <laughs> or Quint getting eaten by a shark? Most rewatchable scenes. So here's what's interesting. I don't have a rewatchable scene for this movie until the 26 minute mark. Mm. And the the second and third force of this movie, it's basically an hour, is one of the best middles the middle of a movie. The middle the second yeah. act of this movie. And the when it beginning really starts of the, to get the beginning of the end of this movie aren't quite as good, but I think that it really throws a good like third to seventh inning is just elite. And that's where I had most of the scenes. But the first one I have is Ramon goes to see Dennis at the taco stand. And he does that. Raymond. Yeah. I, I call him Ramon, okay. too. Is he, he's Ramon Raymond. Okay. I mean, he did both. I mean, I mean maybe, because <laughs> I don't know. He's introduced both ways. I know, because I think there's, you know, with his homies and his family, he's, he's the, the, the I was trying to show Ramon some respect. Okay, no, he's Sorry, also no, Raymond. Ramon Raymond. Okay. I'll do Raymond from now on, because he is called Raymond Moore. Um, but that's when Peck does the, your wife fuck around? Yeah. It's like, what? So there, well, first of all, I want to ask a couple of things about this scene. If somebody says to you, your wife, fuck, does your wife fuck around? What's the proper response? No, I wasn't going to ask that, but that's, I guess, a great prompt. <laughs> I just don't know what the, an what answer is the right answer for that? I just blind You would rage. just walk, you would just walk in the opposite direction. Yeah, just blind Just rage. walking away, right? Because okay. the question itself is so It's just like a conversation well, to ender. to be fair, R Raymond starts it. Like, Raymond's kind of like, let's talk about oh, Van's you wife. Oh, fucking, yeah, Raymond has suspicions. Ah, it's actually above He's yeah, like, hey, man, point. as friends, let's talk about our friend in common. I think Penny might be sleeping around, and that's driving him to cocaine and insanity. But Raymond, in that scene, I think is insinuating that Dennis Oh, he's definitely fucking, fucking with him. Yeah. And then he's like, you're going to fuck with me? Watch let let's fuck around. Yeah, right. And he's like, this is what happens. And then I would like to introduce a new award to the rewatchables. Oh wow. oh wow. Which is the once upon in time in Hollywood Rick Dalton Award for the best acting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it's Richard Gere in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's Richard Gere being like, I'm married, you're married, we're married. Do you want to fuck around? Doesn't feel good, does it? Right. It's fucking incredible. He is out of his mind in this scene. Little things with the hand. Oh, he's yeah. got his, he's, he's drinking the- The two the, prostitutes the, behind the, the, him? Behind perfectly him. framed? He's, he he's looks drinking away. a small coffee. Yeah. He, he, drink, he drinks the small coffee. He's doing this. And he's, and he's like, it's intimate the way he's fucking with him. As a friend. As a friend. <laughs> As a friend. As a friend. <laughs> he's like, he's drawing him in. You know how like in training day, 
like when Alonzo asked, what's Ethan, Ethan Hawke's character? Jake. Jake. When, when Alonzo asked Jake, he's like, you and your white eye, like, I bet you, I bet you still fuck her face to face. It's so obvious that he is like, Pull, pulling a power move on yeah, him. Yeah. In this move, in this in this scene, you're thinking, I know he's fucking with him, but is he also trying to give him good advice and get him laid and get him and get him laid and, and give him a, it's the manipulation is so top tier that it's, right. it's fantastic. Gear does this move and he does it in other movies where he gets super close to who he's talking to, male or female, and he keeps the eye contact all the time. Yes. He's like very intense. He's always good for like the two shot, but he does it in this movie and Garcia. He was doing the look away. Oh, he and can't he handle back. it. He's so like, uncomfortable. He, yeah. It's so great. He's it's just good. like, this guy is like shorting out my frequencies here. Like, I can't handle like the eye contact. And you know what? That's probably because he actually really doesn't like him. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're all looking for strange, just like you and me. I don't care if it's your wife, my wife, his wife. They're all looking for strange. It's crazy. One on a t-shirt. It kind of makes you go, wait, are they all looking But for it's strangers? also like he sets <laughs> up them? the reality of this movie, which is that every single person is looking to fuck around professionally or sexually behind each other's backs. Yeah. So you, you can't trust anybody and whatever they're doing. The and the reason why Peck. That, the, re the law of Peck. It's the law of Peck. The reason why that might be the first rewatchable scene is because up until that point, they do a good job of making you a little unsure it just seems like a typical police movie where it's like, oh, there's yeah. stuff happening. There's going to be a band of LA cops that are a little dirty, and, and that, then they're going to take him down. Flips. Yeah. But Dennis Peck also, up to that point, has like looked out for people. You see the way he operates. Yeah, yeah. Like when he gets the guy, when he he comes over to Vanny and he like breaks up the fight with him. Breaks and his up wife. the fight with him, and then hey, I'm going to make sure that you that this guy works for you and send you to the Raider game with your kid. You're like, this guy's kind of the father figure to the whole thing. Like, what's his real deal? Second scene. I mean, the movie's cooking now. Dennis goes to have a drink with the Orocas. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bro, this scene is so fucking nuts, dog. <laughs> Immediately puts his hand on Tova Orocas' thigh. And she's like, she's electrocharged like she hasn't been in her whole life. And this guy put her hand John on John Capellos like, is perfectly cast. The yeah. fact that he can't get the waiter is amazing. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, one second, I'll just... uh. Go get you a drink. He's like, um, we've made contact. <laughs> he's <laughs> right. like making jokes and he's got his hand he's up his wife's He's sweaty and weird. Uh, I want you to kill my mother and father. Okay. Yeah. Now we're now we're going. Meanwhile, I don't know what's going on under the table. He's they don't finger give blasting his wife. Well, and they don't give the one extra scene of like of him doing it, but it's yeah. seen, but she's but so she, moved. She's starting to do she's so moved. She's she's, it's not so like she's watching Field of Dreams. No, right. she's <laughs> moved. She, he's moving her. Yeah. All right? She like, is aroused. So, so but, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. The thing about that is, this is why I always think about characters like that. The thing, the most important thing is, what if that goes wrong? Do you know how fucking confident? Do you know how? He, but fucking, he clocks that he dude knows. the second he walks in. That, he's like, this guy that's, is nothing. That's so that is such a big part of the character. Like he goes down there. He's he doesn't know this guy. He's fucking with his wife under the table. The amount of times that's had to go right. Do you think the guy knows? I don't think he knows. I don't but think he's he... dead because he's already been like, kill my parents. And so yeah. Gear's like, I already have you. Like, And when Gear does the like, yeah, yeah, I can do it for 15. We'll just get some gangbangers to do it and like chop their heads off. And then I'm going to leave your dri driver's license somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, And it's like, he's basically like, I own you now. That's the thing. Yeah. For, him, for him, this is a, a complete power play. So he's not going to take the money the guy's offered. He has this big secret on him, and now he's also taking his. It's life the same on. thing he has with Dorian, and the same like, and the same thing he has with uh with uh, Van Stretch. Right. So with Dorian, he's like, "We're gonna we're gonna put this crime scene so that you that this is a justifiable shooting, and now I own you, right? And now I own Van, and now I own this guy, and now I'm trying to own Raymond. It's amazing. Of course, you can trust me. I'm a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Next rewatchable scene: the second. Dennis Raymond scene when he's try just trying to get Garcia I, I, to punch I, Sometimes him. I come on a little strong. <laughs> yeah. Makeup. Hey, man. Let's talk about new couples. Yeah. Everything's in a hurry. Such a hurry. You don't enjoy the pussy anymore. You start wondering. And then he does the, he starts talking about the wife yeah. and says she's a little too skinny. The skinny ones give good head. Pow. Bam. Boom. And then the, uh, He crosses some lines. Craig, just play the clip. <laughs> I'm not saying some of the stuff he says. 
Uh, that scene's incredible. So you think Gear's better in the first scene than that scene? It's just, a, it's a more subtle, like, I, it, it, the fact that it comes out of nowhere. Because in the, in this, the first scene with Raymond and, and Dennis, you're like, oh, maybe Dennis is, is leveling with this guy. They're going to, like, they're going to kind of have this moment of calm before it goes wrong. And he just completely is like, you know, oh, just as friends. Like, it's just so per no perfect. The first scene, he's testing him in a very, very specific way. Like, even with, you know, offering him the, the girl, he's he's testing him out. And now he knows how far he has to go to break him. That's probably just a tougher scene to play. The second scene is, I'm going to get this guy to punch me a couple of times. In city, in front of City Hall. In front of City yeah. Hall. It's part of the manipulation. Well, speaking of manipulation, next scene, it's a quickie. Van calls his wife to tell her, tell her that he's going to, uh, going to play ball with the, with the, uh, with Andy and our crew and the camera pans back and she's riding Dennis Peck. Yeah. Yeah. This was in the movie theater. Got a gas from people in the theater. It got a gas. It, it was like an Thursday night when I was watching shocking it. reveal. Like, oh no. Yeah. And, uh, it's like one of the, like, it's, it's really sad too. You're just like, this is not, nobody's even enjoying this. And it looks like, it almost looks like Van Stretcher's wife is sad. Like she's, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's like sad. I'm not, I've seen this scene many times before. She's in sad, happy, different types of cinema, but like it, it, in, in, in this, on, on the of, Apple vision pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, Van was like, <laughs> right. But like, it's, it's. Even in that type of cinema, it's still debilitating when you see it. It's like, damn. Oh. I've seen it in Westerns. I've seen it in... <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought you liked Van Stretch. Right. What are you doing, Dennis Peck? Right. Just can't resist. I have the... Uh, Dennis gets Van killed and then kills the killer. Is a great twist. And then kills Van for sure. Mm -hmm. So you see... He's going in the van. You're like, oh, man. I don't like how this looks for Van Stretch. And then they start to open the door and Gear takes the step back. It's awesome. It just moves to the side. Just moves Boom. to the side. And you're like, oh no, this is it. And it's one of the better shotgun blasts. Mm. It's it's a little bit like throwback to Peck and Paul when guys used to fly across the room. Yeah. Yeah. Slow-mo. Mm -hmm. I like it. And then we get the twist of the van starting up, driving away. He's got to kill him. Uh and then you get the uh the really heart-wrenching, like, I'm not dead. Yeah. And uh I got to get back home to my kid and to yeah. my, and he just fucking because the first thing you see from Van Stretch is him being like an abusive prick piece of shit but by the time this movie ends him he is a completely completely vulnerable and character that you empathize with you know it's a really good scene it's a good action scene there's another action scene scene with the uh, the big shootout with the other Van shooter that just keeps going and going there's a yeah. chase that's solid and then uh Man, the jealousy scene. Peck having lunch with with our, our and that's when this sort Nancy of turns Travis. into the rear window a little bit, right? Like or or vertigo or something, where it's like this guy has now become completely consumed by jealousy and and his like sexual inadequacy rather than the case. So we, this is all tied together. The lunch scene where he's on the street freaking out, mm -hmm. can't can't figure out where his wife is the rest of the day. Goes into the office, comes down, elevator opens. And Peck headbutts him and really says some inappropriate things that I'm also not going to say in the pod. Yeah, so I Craig's going to have to play. So hoping that Craig's going to have to play this too. <laughs> I, I have it in my notes as Bill to give a dramatic reading of what he tells. Drove her crazy. Drove her no, crazy. Craig's gonna, he's Craig's gonna, gonna he's play. He's going to do it as Tony Romo in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Drove her crazy, Jim. Or, let, or let's 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 get let's have Wayne Jenkins give it. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, but yeah, then I think even Wayne is like, damn, these are some dirty cops. <laughs> I got to say, out. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> then he gives him at the end, after he says a lot of uh, inappropriate things and punches him and headbutts him, you know what they say about Latin fighters, Raymond? Yeah. You know what they say? Too fucking macho. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Too fucking macho. They don't backpedal when they have to. So they're used up young. And throws his wife's panties at her. Mm -hmm. Dennis Peck was going for Nuts. it. Nuts. <laughs> and then the wife is so... Uh, flustered later, she's like, "You came into the thing and cursed me out and, and beat me up and threw a pair of my panties at me." And I'm like, "Yo, man, you haven't seen what this motherfucker is going right, I know. Yeah. Like, He's had like a really bad like, Wednesday. Like, <laughs> really got his head. Like, you don't know what's been happening to him, man. What uh, 
What do you have for most rewatchable, Chris? I have I have when they first meet outside of the burger joint, and and he's like, "You you're married. I'm married. We're all married." Like that that mesmerizing scene. You know, I have the elevator fight just because it's almost like a horror movie scene. Yeah, are you like, is he gonna kill him? Yeah, he's yeah. gonna. Yeah, is this guy gonna die right here? Yeah. Also, I like it. Peck has been like taking punches a lot and being yeah. like, "Oh yeah, right, I can't fight." And you're like, "Oh, this guy kicks ass." He is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I have that whole stretch, the jealousy scene all the way through the elevator fight. I have. What's age the best? Just as a movie device only. Dirty cops planting evidence is always great. Yeah, yeah. Just as a gimmick, where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, is are you gonna put the knife in? And his these hand? are the these are the last of the great old good old days where there was no CCTV cameras, no iPhones. Yeah. Guys and it could, could just be a legitimate be like, yeah, plot let's just twist. Get this switchblade in a guy's hand. Yeah, you know, like throw this. <laughs> now you'd at least be looking around and seeing are there cameras. Yeah. You remember we uh, we left out a dirty cop movie. I guess it's a dirty cop movie. LA Confidential. Is that like a yeah. Like, yeah. that counts? Yeah. yeah. So like even in LA Confidential, when Russell Crowe just walks in and executes that guy. <laughs> it's it's like, not funny. I'm just like, it's not funny. I know it's not funny, but it is, it is I forgot about that it, scene. It is kind of funny. Yeah. He just walks in and just fucking kills the guy. <laughs> right. And then just it automatically puts the gun in his hand like the, the whole day. And they're like, yeah. you're promoted. And they're, yeah. Yeah, like, right. yeah. And they give him the whole thing. So it's kind of the same way at the beginning of this movie. And that kind of is something that you'd see over and over again. I like the the when a movie does this, Boston's own Michael Beach, when he says, uh, when he gets him promoted to homicide, mm-hmm. and then Andy Garcia is trying to pump him for info, and he's like, that's just what he would do. You're just like Dennis, man. Yeah. I like the movies where the good guy goes to the dark is side. becoming the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Always works. Yeah, absolutely. What do you got for what stage is the best? Um, I feel like most contemporary menswear is basically what these dudes wear off duty. Oh. You mm. know? Uh, okay. The, the Richard Gear. Polo tucked into the collar, uh, p- tucked in the collar pops. Up. Good pair of sunglasses. Um, and I just the double, the double uh, award of like when directors do their own music. So Mike Figgis was like, "I got this." Mm. <laughs> dun, dun, <laughs> like jumps in, and then Mike Figgis is the dude Nancy Travis is having dinner with in the restaurant oh, wow. when Garcia that. flips oh, I out. I missed that too. So I was just like, "This is just a great like Figgis is like making sure he gets his shots up." Mm. That's great. I didn't know that's yeah. what he looked like. Do you know what I have with Age of the Best? Yeah. L.A. as a cop movie background. Oh, my God. Just driving around. Also, no, no, like, it just seems like much less traffic because I was doing some mapping for this movie. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, these guys are getting from Long Beach to Granada Hills. Like, Fucking, they went from, they were, I know exactly where they were. And then they end up on Sherman Way. I'm like, that took a while like, <laughs> right. to, to, to get to where But I were. guess they are doing a night shift. So maybe traffic wasn't as bad. Maybe so traffic wasn't as I had a similar thing. I thought they made LA feel like Miami in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's very happy. The sun's out. It's very diverse and vibrant. You're wearing and a blue the, sweater. It's yeah, like, yeah, you just, know, it's yeah. 64. You feel like you're almost yeah. like in South Beach. I had the uh, Garcia and Gear haircuts, which are very early 90s. Get, Garcia especially, it's almost like the flat top. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Walsh eventually would take it to another oh, yeah, level yeah, yeah, on yeah, Manitouno. Yeah. And yeah. then Gear, I, li- I just like how his hair looks in this movie. Like, it just, it looks styled. It it ties in with the fact that he's this good-looking guy who he can looks like fuck the cop who way. can fuck. Yeah, like it's a cop haircut, but a cop who can fuck. So, Lori Metcalf's awesome in this movie. Incredible. We probably should have mentioned her sooner, but she's not. You know, she's it's in like it kind too of much not a Dion. great part. Yeah, like, but she's awesome. Every scene, she's good. She really clicks with Garcia. Like I have a feel for her. I'm sad when she gets shot at the end. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think she's good with uh, Garcia. I like the line, "How was your day?" I got a racist boss, small desk, and a new partner. <laughs> so that was his answer. <laughs> what about when Billy Baldwin is complaining to uh, Dennis Peck and he goes, she's on somebody else's root. Yeah. Bruh. I've I never heard of root. Yeah. root. Have you heard root no, before? No, like, she's as on somebody else's root. Penis euphemism? Right. He, and he didn't even know that he was, she was on his root. He was rooting his wife. I also where that conversation takes place is in like this unfinished Granada Hills Granada Hills development where they've got like the third house where there's and it's still just dirt hills yeah in the background it's like that's great you know what that's underrated because when you think about I guess it's Lethal Weapon three they're still building the uh, the 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 thing and then the other Lethal Weapon they're building all of these new oh construction construction. and action crime movies Yeah. yeah but also just how the cops hide their money. Like, yeah. where it's just like, how the hell are they, like, and when they go through, like, what van makes and what penny makes, 
Right. And they're and, talking about the fact that, oh, they may, he makes $38,000. They live in Granada Hills. All together, they make 80000 80, They bought a $400,000 house, which... Show me what that's. This is all pre internet. Yeah. Post internet, I think they're just plugging in the cop and all his holdings come up and they're like, wait, that doesn't add yeah, up. Yeah, then they go to Redfin right and look at their house and they're right. like, nah. Van Stretch's wife was played by Faye Grant, who's bounced around and been in a bunch of stuff. But I always liked her. I think she's good in this movie. I don't know what else. What else I haven't seen her in anything. Like, what she else was she a any? big TV actress. She okay. was in one of the procedurals. I like the uh, married couple arguments in this movie with Garcia, like the, the tension, how she's sizing him up and kind of intimating I said we had sex a little bit more often yeah. in all these different ways they just have they have a good chemistry of her being sexually frustrated and the, him being work obsessed the movie does a good job making his character look like a pencil dick until he becomes obsessed <laughs> yeah. yeah like and until he becomes basically Dennis Pack until, be, yeah. until he right. becomes him yeah, yeah. Huh? some lessons there how about what's age the best just a great model of co-parenting you know, sometimes you got to yeah. make it work <laughs> with, your eight kids. with your eight kids with Lolly just bouncing around you know? mm, with your ex-wife that you still fuck every now and again. Just, yeah, yeah she doesn't care. It's part of the alimony. Right. I like when dirty cops say, she's my snitch, man. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the fact that they changed the original ending is the what stage the best. Cause the original ending, it sounds pretty convoluted. Yeah, it's he's in there longer. He seems like there's going to be some sort of sexual assault. Andy Garcia comes in. He gets shot. They end up going out the window, falling in the swimming pool. Peck drowns. It seems like he drowned, but then he didn't. And it just right. did not work. And the test audiences hated it. My last What's Age the Best, I was going to save this for later, but uh, just Xander Berkeley as Rudy, mm. the mall guy. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. And just the idea that the, all these cops have to have second jobs yeah. at, at mall security. I guess that's the Glendale Galleria or Sherman Oak. I don't even know what Galleria one of the, would be. One of the best second jobs. Yeah. And him just being like, you guys just go into the bathroom and do coke all day. And the cops are all <laughs> on coke. Yeah. And they got to work at the mall. Yeah. And the whole, and the whole time, it's not, not a very pro-cop. Yeah. Being a cop is a great type of movie. No, it's like you make 38 grand a year and you have to work at the in, in Glendale. Right. right. Yeah, for Rudy. <laughs> what, was Rudy. That, what was the cop movie with Jamie Lee Curtis? Blue Steel? Blue Steel, yeah. That's a dirty cop movie, yeah. right? No. No? In Blue Steel, isn't she... I thought somebody's after, dirty, somebody's dirty in that movie. Isn't she I after that a, one a serial while. killer though? Yeah. I thought some, somebody. Oh yeah, was you're dirty right. It is it is a serial killer. Yeah, she's after Steel. Ron Silver. Is My it, guy Ron Silver. Yeah, is in there. Just, I love that movie. Might be I interviewed movie. Ron Silver at the Ali Junket in mm -hmm. 2001, and you had 10 minutes with every actor and actress, and I started out with Ron Silver about how much I love Silent Rage. Mm. We bonded. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, he, he's never forgotten. I was you. like, I'm a huge Silent Rage guy. And he goes, the guy who wouldn't die. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just, we clicked for 10 minutes. It was great. Uh, Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award. Best Needle Drop. Whatever music is going on with the, with drunk, angry Andy Garcia when he's kind of zoning in and out. Oh, when he's and drinking playing the, like, the Cuervo? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that whole. I had the music that better? drops when uh, the pimp watches Dorian arrest his girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 And yeah. it's like this Jimmy Jam and Terry right. Lewis song comes on. It's like, dun, 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 dun. And then it goes back to the pimp and he's got like the bald head yeah. with the futuristic mm. glass. Yeah. Uh, the Big Kahuna Burger Award for Best Use of Food and Drink. What do you have, what do you have for this? I just have all the styrofoam cup drinking. Yeah, yeah. Cost styrofoam cup coffee. I had the big Pepsi's when they're yeah. both checking out the girl that walks by, and he realizes, oh, Den of Thieves Benny Hanna Award, scene stealing location, La Panta Rosa. <laughs> I think it said <laughs> it's a long name. The club, yeah, the club. Yeah. Because they come out, he comes out, he stumbles out in the morning. It's yeah. a wide shot. I was like, that place looks cool. Not the Arocus Malibu place? <laughs> no, that was a good one, too. That was a good one, too. Yeah. That establishing shot from outside the house. What'd you have for great shot, Gordo? Uh, I had Peck choking out Van as the ambulance arrives. So you can kind of see it in the background getting closer. And you can see, like, the reflection of the sirens in the, the side door. It's really, it's cool. I like the shot of behind when he has his hand on the wife's leg. And the camera's behind them, so you can oh, see yeah. both of them. But Carl, the janitor, is between them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's kind of knows what's going on. Just that shot. Uh, Carl, the janitor. He's like, maybe the kids haven't changed. Maybe you've changed. Yeah. 
So this might be too on brand for me, but I have to give the best shot to the camera pull back to the wife being on top of Dennis. Just because that was a great shot, Cordo. Yeah, like I, I have to because it, it seems that. like she's on the phone, but you're like, why is she kind of wincing? Broke Kalika. Kalika got up and said, I can't look at this. <laughs> <laughs> she left. <laughs> she walked out. <laughs> she was like, because she saw Richard Gere, and Richard Gere has a thing with the black ladies. My mama loved Richard Gere. My grandmother loved Richard Gere. I think Richard it's all Gere. ladies. Yeah. Like, it's, I think it's, it's all it's, colors. It's like, and, like, and so she saw, oh, you watching the Richard Gere movie for that? I was like, yes, yeah, for watch. She was watching it. She's like, you're kind of sleazy in this. And then she sees that. She's like, uh-uh. That's all she said. <laughs> she walked to the back. She's like, you can watch this on Vision Pro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The, the uh, Vincent Chase Award for Are We Sure This Character Was Actually Good at His or Her Job. What do you have for this? Uh, is Raymond a good internal affairs officer? I don't officer? think he is. <laughs> <He's not. laughs> I think he sucks. He's like yeah. three weeks on the job, goes completely rogue, beating right. up cops outside of City Hall, mm -hmm. and chasing them all, and, and stalking his own wife, frankly. What do you think his dev talk was like for <laughs> the first three months? <laughs> we see hey, a, lot, a lot of room for growth. A lot of potential, but, yeah. uh, you know. Did start a fight with your wife in a crowded restaurant. Yeah. He like goes to the cops. Multiple people. It's like, I want to investigate this pick. They're like, nah, fuck you. And he's like, all right, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. pull all his financials. I I zagged on this. I have uh, Raymond's wife. As an art, art dealer? Art person. Are we sure this character is actually good at her, at, at her job? Not just the art dealer, but like, I'm sorry. Like, my husband is freaking out about some case that well, he has. Well, I think Raymond keeps it all inside, though. Mm -hmm. we'll talk but to some her. random person's like, we got to talk about Raymond. She doesn't tell him. It's not random. This is a co-worker. She doesn't say anything. So somebody at Spotify could call my wife and be like, we got to talk about Bill. My <laughs> wife's like, okay. <laughs> we'll we go to lunch. lunch right now. <laughs> and I won't tell him. Yeah. Like, I'd be so mad if I was like, you fucking tell him I'll, somebody I'll from Spotify at lunch I, have, so I, I wanted to hit that <laughs> anyway. fucking insane. Yeah. She, how does she not tell him immediately? It's true. Hey, some dude called from your office. Do you know Dennis? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're you, Dennis? This got this fucking ridiculously hot guy. From I feel the like office. he dropped by, and I also think that it's ridiculous. The assistant in the art in the gallery mm -hmm. when she's like, "Yeah, she's not here. She went to lunch and went shopping." It sounds like she does that often. Uh, you know? Not only did she say that, she said she's not here. She went to lunch and and she went shopping. Then he goes, "What time she's going to be back?" She says, like, "She might not come back." Right, which is fucking with him. Cause he's like, and he's making thirty eight k a year, so I don't know what that gallery. They did doing. not have Life three hundred and sixty back then. He no. couldn't track her on the phone. <laughs> um, the Butch's girlfriend award for weak link of the film. I, it's really tough to recover from him hitting his wife in a crowded restaurant it, in nineteen ninety. It was tough. Yeah. Now it's like, oh I think. My all, God. I think also the fact that it's horrible. The next interaction they have. They go wild for each other as well, if that was all part of the no, magic he's like, recipe. If you, if you talk to anybody again, I'll kill you. Yeah. I'll kill you. It's so, like this so, guy's fucking lost his mind. So this is we. This is part of the thing that's aged the worst. This aggressive, toxic maleness that like resolves anything by the man's unyielding desire for the woman. Meaning, yeah, if you really. Love her, and you. If you're really obsessed with her, anything that you do is cool. Right. That used to be like a huge, huge trope in movies, and obviously, we've kind of you have to fight for her and actually fight her. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Obviously, like we've disintegrated that. Right. We'll be back on Slate.com after this. <laughs> <laughs> what's <laughs> what's uh, what's age the worst? I have one. Right off, got? right off the rip. Peck taking away that cop's Raiders tickets. That guy was about to go see Bo Jackson. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's 89, man. Wow. That's Jay Schroeder quarterback. Iconic oh. Tech Mobile team. Yeah. Iconic oh, Tech Mobile team. Jesus. That's Shanny into Art Shell. Oh, and that's man. fucking... That's took, crazy. That guy could have seen peak Bo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might have seen like a top three Bo Jackson game. And he's but, like, oh, but, no, we'll give it to Traficante and his kid. He's and like, now, what the fuck? And now he has to go work at the <laughs> mall. <laughs> <laughs> and then some guy like is going to come into a Raiders jacket and just be like, man, Bo Jackson's <laughs> fucking for 98 yards. <laughs> it's a one carry. That's a great one. Um, Nancy Travis is... Like, why is she with this guy? 
I I was going to say for recasting couch. So what's the worst? It's like, why are you two together? What if, is this movie better if Annabelle Shiora and Nancy Travis swap roles? Oh. Wow. And Annabelle That's Shiora a has one. a lot That's more a really like good one. passion. You know what I mean? She's like, just go, I, she feels like she has like an extra gear, you know? I think the movie's a lot better. You know why? That's a really good one. Because there's, there's this whole dark a, a, a Italian slash Latin thing that goes on. It others yeah. them a little bit more. There's more of a contrast with Dennis Peck. I think that's a, yeah. She can make him a pot roast and throw it at him. <laughs> throw it at him? <laughs> like she did to Tony. Slashes tires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really good call, Sierra. I Thanks, like man. that. Uh, I also have old police computers with the green type. Anytime you see those oh, in yeah. the movie, you're like, how did people even the read MS computers Goss? back yeah. then? Jumping Jack Flash. So, Ramon goes to his cousin's club. You're sticking with Ramon. I love it. <laughs> well, he's Ramon in this yeah. scene because he's going to the club. And uh, he puts the word out for the driver. And this is one Dimitrio. of these. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of these. I, this scene should have been like five minutes and awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going in this world? What's your yeah. cousin's club like? They get it over in like 40 seconds. It's like, all right, we talked to my cousin. This is also like, the I part of what's the movie going on in this where club. Amy is supposed to be this like veteran by the book IAD officer, and she just like completely lets Ray run the show, right? And, like, and basically turn into like Serpico. Yeah, right. Well, that's another thing. Like he, there's a scene where he pushes her up against, or she's up against the wall, and she's telling him that like, uh, you know, I'm your, I'm like your senior officer. Yeah, and and that's he, pretty. Sexually charged as well. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. asserts yeah. his power over her, and that scene is almost sexual. You think that something yeah. is going to happen, you know? But it's, it's his maleness. By the way, I forgot something that aged the best, real quick, just real quick, a little latitude. Uh, cook holding has <laughs> aged. <laughs> oh, it's just like a theme. As a theme. Yeah. Like, cook's cook. way, it's way better known now. <laughs> it, it's much better known now. Yeah. I didn't even know what it was called back then. Right. I didn't, now there's, there's genres, there's different, it exists in a way in pop culture. There's genres. This yeah. is, this created the cuck thriller. The cuck thriller. The cuck from hell. The, the cuck from hell. Yeah. See, we should, that's Ringer Films. Presents. Cuck from hell. Yeah. The cuck Call cord. Hell. See? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> cord. Cord's up now, right? <laughs> um, um, me award winning screenwriter Cord Jefferson. In the cuck from hell. <laughs> cuck cup. <laughs> A guy named Raymond Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> I put this in for what's the worst. <laughs> Cut cop. See, if it was in the 90s, we could probably get that made. Yeah. Right. I put this in for Van. Where's the Ramon boxing scene? Where he's just fucking around boxing? I would say Dennis, they talk about he's a boxer. Being a boxer. Where's the one Dennis of him boxing training? analyst is also is the worst. I don't think he would have really had much of a career. <laughs> right. But don't you want to see him like just in the gym? It would have been somebody saying like, "Man, you could have been Golden Gloves." Yeah, it would have been a good scene because it would have <laughs> given him a, it would have given him a little bit more. Oh, like this guy's kind of a badass as well. You know what I mean? We needed it. Last one is just this movie's attitude toward domestic violence it's, is, is reprehensible. It's <laughs> everyone, everyone really in the movie gets abused. Yeah. My only, I can't decide this is actually the worst or there. There has to be a, a middle ground for this, but it's the Andy Garcia. I'm so mad. I'm laughing face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like when she Dude, confronts you did this him for me earlier. when he's like when she confronts him when he's eating Chinese food and working, and he's like, Oh yeah, you're, you're mad at me, you're mad at me, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, why are you laughing at her? Vincent does that. Yeah. Vincent's like Joey's like, ha ha ha, fuck you. you to, <laughs> Michael, tell him tell him tell one time, one time, tell But one he has time. that like I'm pissed off, so I'm laughing <laughs> thing, which I like, but I also don't know if it always works. Because if I was Nancy Travis, I'd be like, space. what the fuck are you doing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to add Ramon Raymond into the, uh, is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins and Harley Mayo? <laughs> Ramon Raymond. Uh, Coming back, was there a better title for this movie? I mean, are you good with internal affairs? Cop 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 Great one. What do you think about calling it Too Fucking Macho? <laughs> too fucking much. I think I got a good one I, I was texting my dad who's a former police officer about internal affairs and he said that they called it The Rat Squad Ooh, that's a great name oh, that's a awesome. great way better name. I like that, that. and the then maybe you squad. get the departed the rat, rat in there squad. yeah pretty yeah. good Rat Squad's good Your dad was anti accountability huh no, he was pro IA he, he was like maybe the larger like LAPD departments didn't like IA but he said at his department they had no issue with IA I didn't know you were from here 
I'm from the Bay. He was like, uh, he was like maybe at these like larger departments people didn't like IA, but where he worked, he was like, they were fine. And they it, were fine. it was also a rotation. You would only do it for like four years. Yeah, because they. It, I think the implication is that he's doing this to get a promotion. They right? said yes. that, yeah. that you, you get promoted. Yeah. What do you have for Stephen A. Smith how to take a word, Chris? <clears throat> it's funny you should ask because I've actually thrown a little curveball here because okay. instead of the Stephen A. Smith hottest take award, I have the John Hollinger Advanced Analytics Award Oh wow! Uh, for Dennis Peck's murders versus wives fucked ratio. <laughs> <laughs> so I counted him directly being responsible for 11 dead people in this movie from yeah. covers up Dorian shooting, kills Van, kills Van's killer, has Stephen Arokas' parents killed, so that's five. Mm-hmm. Facilitates or participates in the double homicide of Stephen and Tova Orokis at the end of Malibu. Probably calls SWAT on Avia's bust, 8, 9, and 10, because three guys die in the shootout yeah. there. And then might have killed Amy, we don't know, because if she makes it through at the end. So that's 11. So it's 10 and a half. And then sex, he has... Eight kids with a ninth on the way, four ex-wives, is still sexually active with one ex along with his current wife, Heather. Also beds Van's wife before killing Van, Stephen Arokas's wife before killing both of them, and graphically describes sodomizing Raymond's wife to Raymond. He also runs prostitutes out of a burger joint. So mm-hmm. that's five. So mm-hmm. 11 to five ratio. So like 2.2? 2. <laughs> yeah. Who's he competing against in the all time standings? <laughs> of murders versus sex? <laughs> Tony, Tony Soprano's up there. Yeah. Nick, Nicholson and the Departed. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Do you have a Stephen A. Smith? Do you have one? You want to go? No, you, you. I mean, I can go. Internal Affairs, a cooler job than it gets credit for in movies. In movies, it's always like the shit job, but there's never been a movie that's made it seem like, oh, this is actually, these people are doing some good. There's some dirty cops. We're going to try to fix what's going on here. And these are actually the good guys. But in movies, there's always like an edge to it where it's like the people that are doing it, you don't instinctively want to root for them as the movie viewer. For some reason, the psychology of it is I'm actually rooting for Dennis Peck. Yeah. Who's a fucking horrible guy. That's because of how effective copaganda is. The cops are the heroes in every movie. It's it's true. Yes. It's like a Jedi mind trick. So the people, so the, the, I should be rooting for. But it's Andy Garcia, the guys are always right. the guys who are trying to hold the cops back from doing what they need to do, right? Right. Yeah. So it's like I need to blow some shit. They're up. like the hall monitors. Yeah. Like yeah. Exactly. By 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 the way, let me tell you something real quick. I don't give a fuck what fucking area of life that you're talking about. Nobody likes a snitch. The po- the the street don't like a snitch. The cops don't like a snitch. The right, the mob don't like a snitch. The army doesn't like a snitch. But do you Nobody, consider internal affairs officers snitches? I don't, but the cops in these movies do. Right, And hey, right. you're one of us, Because they're like cops yeah. that went yeah. sideways, it even, it even permeates, like, like network procedurals. You'll see, like, on Law & Order SVU, they'll be like, that fucking IA guy is out here. Like, it's like, this is a... I'm just well, Remember in a, another 48 Hours? Oh, yeah. The bad guy seems like it's the internal affairs That's right. guy. That's right. Meanwhile, he's investigating Jack Cates, who is, like, just completely corrupt. A fucking lunatic. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. 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 and it's like, maybe, why is this guy the bad yeah. guy? Uh, what do you have? This movie didn't need any more black people. <laughs> <laughs> it is the only movie that I've ever watched that doesn't have a lot of black people that I was like, this movie actively doesn't need more black people. Wait, can it we probably make, didn't need the black people that it had. We need to make, did this movie need more black people as, <laughs> as a category? As a, as a, I, just, I, just, I just, I don't, I do, this movie didn't No, only for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> like in Risky Business, we this, should just the, be like, ah. Risky business, maybe. This movie, no more black people. We don't want to have any part in what's going on. There's some representation in this movie, though. There's not? Yeah. There, there are people in it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. Like, Michael Beach and his career was like in the whole thing. I felt so bad for him. <laughs> yeah. He had to deal with all of this crazy shit from these white people going on in this movie. I felt like he was... This movie didn't need any more. It was a perfect amount. That's an automatic category for every watch most you do going <laughs> Did this movie need any more? I'm with it. I can't wait for the Star Wars episode. I can't wait until you do Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've always thought Braveheart could have used one dude. Like Morgan Freeman, Robin Hood kind exactly. of situation. Yeah. One, I love Braveheart. I don't care what anybody says. Casting what ifs are, speaking of Nick Nolte, yeah. our guy Nick Nolte was offered the role of Dennis Peck, turned it down to do another 48 hours. Hmm. Well, he was sexiest man of the year 
Man. One time, uh, this has it, to be gear. It, it, it it's gear. Can't, it can't, right? You can't do it. This right? is arguably has to be like gear. the the research on this one suggests this was up. Every actor in Hollywood. Was I almost up didn't for it. trust the research because it listed twenty read, white actors I'll just from read 1990. It off. Alec Baldwin, Tom Berenger, Jeff Bridges, Pierce Brosnan, and Kevin Costner, Willem Dafoe, De Niro, Michael Douglas, Harrison Ford, which is the one that I I would nominate. I would be so great. Mel Gibson. A little on the nose. Jeff Goldblum, Ed Harris, William Hurt, Don Johnson, Tommy Lee Jones, Michael Keaton, Nick Nolte, Al Pacino, Christopher Reeve, Kurt Russell, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So let me give you my three I from think Don Jensen, John, Don Johnson could have done that That's role. my three. Yeah. So my three from that is, oddly enough, Christopher Reeve. Mm. It, it, so let me tell you what. No, I, I know, yeah. yeah. So oddly enough, Christopher Reeve. Great. I, I don't know if he has the swarminess, but to see him do it would have been fucking fantastic. And the fact As that he Zag. decided to do Superman 4 is out, yeah. It's obscene. Don Johnson is almost as good of a He's kind of played this guy. Yeah. Him and Gear were in the same kind of corner for a while there. Yeah, Don Johnson, was, I don't know if he has quite the chops, but he... The hot spot. Yeah, like he, but but he'd have been right there. He'd have been right there. Who's your third guy? You just I gave fucking us two. lost it. Mm. I, I had it. Although, read the names again. I mean, it's a long list. Oh, fuck it then. Just... <laughs> Thought experiment. 1990 Denzel as Dennis Peck. That's a totally different movie. It's a it's it, 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 it's, it's called quite Training Day. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really well, is. No, but I, like, bro, think about the articles. Yeah, that come out. The movie looks so different. Yeah. See, that's the movie that should be made now. The Honestly, movie should be made now. I think Denzel like could have played that part though. He definitely could have. Yeah, I like when Denzel got a little dirty. Denzel. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Ruffalo Hanna Ribbon of Partridge Overacting Award. Raymond and Kathleen's fight. Like the day after, they're the just slap. screaming at each other. Yeah. yeah. Best that guy award. So Harrison many. Ford was the other one. By the okay, way. Harrison Ford. Yeah, Harrison Ford. Because he never played a role like that. This movie has so many that guys and that like, girls, including Carl the janitor. Mm -hmm. John Capellos. Yeah. Is he John Capellos or is he Carl the janitor? I think most people would recognize him as as Carl the janitor, but like he's been in so much stuff. Same Breakfast Club, a movie with no black people. No black people. Didn't need any zero. Is Michael Beach that guy? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think he's Michael Beach. Yeah, okay. I think he's well, Michael he's Beach. He's Boston's Michael Beach. And I think Xander Berkeley is Xander Berkeley. You think Xander Berkeley is Xander Berkeley? Okay. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. fucking Ralph from Heat. Is who, who, he is. who, who yeah. Alan Havey is, I know him as Alan Havey, yeah. but I think he's the, that guy from us. Marco the, Rodriguez, the guy who plays Demetrio in this movie. The cousin? Yeah. That was also in Bad Boys. Well, that's, so there's, that's a, no, you're talking about Cousin Gregory. I'm talking about the guy who gets shot when they do the, the SWAT team shows up. And he gets oh, sniped. That, that's, yeah. that's who I like. That guy, that's a super that guy. Well, there's the two Latino that guys actor. Ron Vodder, who we did in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy with the crazy white hair. I don't even know that guy's name, who's like the lieutenant. Oh, the dude who does like the Sig Heil to Yeah, yeah. he is yeah. in The Untouchables with Andy. He's Garcia. one of right. those guys. Yeah. That's right. And then Jack McKay's fiance from season three of 90210 is the, in the art gallery with Nancy Travis. That's all I got. I have Carl the janitor. I still feel like he's Carl the janitor. That's my winner. Um, I had uh, well, two the the Latino actor that gets shot with like with the that guy that guy Marco Rodriguez yeah yeah, yeah Mark, and then um the the guy who's also in Bad Boys that plays his cousin in the bar oh that's uh, oh, oh that, that guy yeah that, he's a that uh, I don't even know Julio what that guy's Oscar name Pichoso. is yeah what did Jack McKay do Jack McKay was Dylan McKay's dad I know but what did he do he was like why was uh, he so rich he was in jail for high finance like oh. Ivan Boski stuff oh because Dylan was the richest one right yeah. Low key. Low key. Yeah. Dion Waiters. I can give you Peck's ex wife. That's Lolly. That's, a, that's the only name you. I have written down, and it's in all caps. I have Mrs. Arocas, and I think Van Stretch's wife was in it too much and doesn't count. Lolly just being like, yeah, sure, let's go into the bedroom. Van, Stre uh, Van the, Stretch's wife. Peck's ex wife. Okay. <laughs> Recasting wife, couch. Yeah. CR already nailed it. Yeah. Would this movie have been better with Tony Romo or Chris Collinsworth <laughs> for the director's commentary? <laughs> this is clearly <laughs> Romo. There's just no way it's not. <laughs> Drove her crazy, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to do it. He's trying to cuck him, Jim. <laughs> He's turning into a cuck. Or when the Garcia, when he loses it. <laughs> what was the name of that place he went to? La oh, Pantalorosa or whatever. La Pantalorosa. Yeah, yeah La Pantalorosa, Jim. <laughs> Half ass internet research. So there's a deleted scene, which none of the deleted scenes are on the uh, YouTubes. 
But there's a conversation. There's another Raymond and Peck scene. They're in a bar drinking and talking about how people want to be bad. And cops want to be bad, worst of all. And the, and the snitch is strip teasing. Oh, key? And they cut it. Yeah. It's the, I think they thought they were good on the Peck Raymond scenes. I'm not sure they were. I think I would have taken I that scene. a little bit. Yeah. Right. It depends on gone, where in the movie. That, so that goes in between. Probably between one and three. Is that after he's beaten him up outside of City Hall? I think Hall, it's before though? he beats him up. It would uh -huh. have to be before. Yeah. 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 The car that Dennis drives in the film, a uh, 1963 Great Chevrolet cars. Yeah. Stingray. The Volkswagen convertible. that Amy has, yeah. LAPD chief at the time, Daryl Gates, condemned this movie. Yeah, that's the least of his worries. This motherfucker. Wasn't a fan. What, he, he didn't like it. Didn't like the it. The worst police chief man. <laughs> <in his life. laughs> I put that on the poster. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sent his biography. Not a fan of internal yeah. affairs. <laughs> This is weird. This is a little bit of a downer, but uh, Faye Grant was married to Stephen Collins, the actor. Oh, God. And then he was the one that there was a whole thing where it turned out he was accused of sexual abuse mm -hmm. of children, and she got caught up in that whole thing, and they got divorced, and he never acted again. Weird. That's my last half fester in research. We're going to Apex Mountain. <laughs> Richard Gere. It is. It it's is, 1990. Right? Is it is. There's not even this is a conversation. Well, I mean, Pretty Woman is Richard Gere's Apex. But Mountain. it's the same year. Same year. He did Internal Affairs and Pretty Woman in so 1990. Yeah, he's yeah. It. it's the hottest it's ever been. Garcia? This and Godfather. Godfather Threes is a this same year, though. Yeah, let's what, do what, it. What are what are the just real quick? What are the signature Andy Garcia roles? To me, it's Untouchables. Untouchables. Godfather, Godfather Three. Godfather Three. Black Rain. This. Ocean's Eleven. Like when a man, man loves a woman. Oh, yeah. When a man loves a woman is a good movie. Your drinking is tearing us apart. Tears apart. No! <laughs> <laughs> Billy Baldwin. Nah, backdraft. Backdraft was him and his. I think it might be Thief of Hearts. Like they built the thing around Billy Baldwin and the and the Sting song. I saw that movie in the theater. I have one. Let's just, can, just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Is there a world in which this is Apex Mountain for the Valley, and in fact, it's not Boogie Nights or Magnolia? It's, it's a <laughs> there's a lot no, there's of, a lot of valley different it's valley. valley. It's a different side good of the valley. valley. Makes you want to live in the valley when you, eh, when you say it. Does a, lot, it? a lot of it. <laughs> a lot I think, of land. I feel like the A lot of it makes the valley look cool and wild. It, yeah, it's very LA Valley. You don't get how hot it is in some of the places there. Dirty LA cops before the worm turned. Uh, it's somewhere between here and colors. And then all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, onion field, right. Isn't that LA? Uh, yeah. Like just Joseph Wambaugh books and stuff like that. That's a good one. James Elroy books. I, but, I like to say LA confidential. I know yeah. that that's, you know, internal affairs. Is it actually the, is there a better IAD movie? There's, a, a, there's not party. another movie where eternal affairs is this prominent in the, yeah. you know, how about moonlighting as a hitman? Cop. Also, what do you do for cop? your day job? I'm a cop. How about do you mess around or anything else? Yeah, I'd kill people's parents. Yeah. <laughs> was a, what, what, kill people's parents. Was Alonzo and his squad were they hitmen? No, not really. Uh, they would rip off drug dealers. Rip off, yeah. They were uh, rippers, yeah. Nancy Travis? No. So I axe murder? Axe murder? Yeah. I was thinking we could have done Nancy Travis month. Yeah. Could have done this, Vanishing Axe Murder. We've done three Nancy what are, Travis so what movies. What are the current the current on the on the drawing board months we have? Sex work month? Oh, I love sex. Prison work. month, dirty cop month. These are for the people listening. These are actual months we've talked about. <laughs> Nancy Travis month. <laughs> Nancy Travis. What, what month. goes in sex work month? <laughs> is this movie canceled month? Yeah, canceled, canceled month. month. That is the best month. Yeah, that, that's the best prison month we had. Yeah. Yeah. Is those, this movie those, canceled those are on the month? board. We're doing a month in April. We okay. haven't decided. Right. Is this movie canceled month? It'd be great. Okay, I, I didn't realize you might want to do one or two. Oh yeah. We should have saved internal affairs for his movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more Apex Mountain, Lori Metcalf, no, because that would be Roseanne. Roseanne Annabelle yeah. Sierra, no. Faye Grant, probably. Um, racehorse or fantasy team name? Van Stretch as a racehorse is a cool racehorse. It's name. pretty cool. Yeah, Van Stretch. But it's it is a mouthful to be like, and down the stretch, stretch they come. Van it's Van Stretch. Van stretch. stretch. The, like I think, but the, there's a little double entendre. The PA there. announcer might get a little tripped up there. All right, pick a nits. I have four, but what do you have? Uh, Raymond out here, uh, 
getting in fights with Dennis, getting in fights with his wife at Spago or wherever, and just just nobody, no supervision of him, his behavior whatsoever. And then the other one is, I don't quite understand how much time has passed in this movie because Stephen Arokas needs his parents killed to diversify his business, but he has a house in Malibu. Like, I thought he was like, we live in a two-bedroom condo and we really need oh, to like, and build. Now we, so we can but it seems like more. he's already quite wealthy. So what's what's the what's the big making a move. The, <laughs> sure. the, the kings were for sale. He's trying to outbid <laughs> Bruce McNell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-man race. It was the Herogas <laughs> versus Bruce McNell. Uh, you have any? I only had I don't have any really nits to pick. I had a couple of Apex Mountains. Oh, go ahead. What do you have? Is this the Apex Mountain of a man imagining his wife with another man in the scene? I've seen this a couple of different times. Oh, like those little flashback things? A little flash where you imagine your wife fucking somebody So what else. are they, the candidates? So best man. Remember the best man? Uh-huh. At the end where he's imagining his wife fucking another guy. Uh, I, I feel like it happens in that movie, The Big Picture, or it's the other way around. Oh, the, the Kevin Bacon one? Kevin Bacon movie. Where he, he imagines himself fucking another woman while he's actually... That, that happens all the time. Right. Yeah. Unfaithful is a big one. When Gear, after he kills the sculptor. Yeah. When he's oh, thinking he about imagining. her with Diane Gear, Lane over and over gears, again. What gears. about, does Indecent Proposal count? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Indecent Proposal. Oh, right, that's, probably the, that's probably, yeah, the that's, that's probably the winner. That's probably the winner. Um, that's the winner. Uh, yeah, and just, it's obviously the apex mountain of cops fucking their uh, partner's wives. Mm. I can't think of I have an one. apex mountain. Yeah. Slapping in movies. Oh, yeah, because he slaps Hard the He slaps man. Billy Baldwin like 10 times. Yeah. Richard but, but, Gere you know, to start the movie. If you watch, as he's doing that, you can see Billy Baldwin already has a big red mark on his neck. They did it must have been like the fifth And then take. Nancy Travis slaps the shit out of Andy Garcia. Yeah. And, and that's real. Yeah. <laughs> now they would CGI him. Mm-hmm. I have four nitpicks, and I'm proud of all of them. Go for it. Who answers the fucking phone as you're riding a dirty cop? <laughs> <laughs> Let it fucking go to answer machine. Well, to You're fair, having sex. She's not like, this is it's a like, dirty cop. She's like, this is Dennis. Hold on one second. Yeah. That is, I don't I think anyone in that scene is enjoying themselves very much. That's, I let, let the phone ring. Yeah. But don't you have to, if the phone, if you let the phone ring. All right. I you're worried, I you're worried he's going to come trouble. home? The if, husband? If you let the phone ring, don't you risk him wondering why you didn't pick the phone up? Pick it up in a couple minutes. Although maybe Dennis Peck, maybe he Dennis lasted Peck like is, 40. Maybe it's like, I'm Dennis is a 45 yeah, minute man. He's sting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Carl, the janitor is frustrated that his parents are screwing up the business. So he's going to hire someone to murder them. Yeah. This is just, that was the best outcome. I, so he, he the took a notepad out. He's like, all right, the here implication, are my options. though, <laughs> is that his wife has, I mean, has she balls. is honestly the, the like the villain of the movie is Tova. Yeah. Because she gets probably prompts Carl to get his parents killed, mm-hmm. then screws Peck and pays Peck to kill Carl. Right. Arocus. So she so she is systematically eliminating his whole bloodline. Yes. <laughs> she's like, it's she's, Game of Thrones. She's, right, yeah. exactly. She's got him to kill his parents and then now then got Peck to kill him. That would have been a better hottest take. Tova is the real villain of this movie, <laughs> not that it's Peck. Um, Peck has eight kids, nine on the way, which we've covered. It's just too many kids. Yeah. He's not old enough. He started young. You're basically, he's like, don't wait too long. That's what he said. He yeah. said, don't wait too long. You're basically kids. every two years there he for 18 wives, years. Yeah. He's, he's been married four times. Yeah. And he's doing a lot of nutting. <laughs> he's nutting everywhere. He's this like, guy nuts like crazy. You think Nick Cannon saw Internal Affairs and was, was like, like, oh, oh shit. This guy's <laughs> making some good points. That's what you're early. doing right there. Start That's early. Right. This is a very small nitpick, but I'm passionate about it. So in a bad guy, in the bad guy world, with all the bad guys, and they're all like in weird clubs, like the club we see in this, and something happens where like there's, Peck pays two shooters to kill his partner. So four people know about this. And the guy drives off in the van and and uh, Raymond goes to his cousin's club right after. And everybody, oh yeah, it was it was Diego. He drove off. Yeah, he's he's blah blah blah. In bad guy world, everybody knows everything that's going yeah. on. It's like there's a bad guy WhatsApp thread. <laughs> They're like, hey, van shooter. Oh, like it's and it's a movie trope, and, and it's it, never explained. It's, it's such a movie. It's such a cemented movie trope 
that so many you never question it's awesome it's like the deal goes down at 5 a.m tomorrow it's like how the fuck do you know yeah that? how did you find it <laughs> yeah. like, you know what i'm saying peck hires the two people that's it those are the only three people that should know about it and one's dead peck's not saying anything so the other guy's like oh man let me call up Had cousin gregory of yeah. two am i tripping or does that happen in heat as well Oh, yeah. yeah. It yeah. happens in all these it movies. Happens, all, yeah, it happens. So in it's all. like, it's going down, 9 o'clock at the diner. The streets talk. The streets Bill. talk in a way that I don't think is realistic in actual movies. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast or untouchable. I have an idea for this. You have one? I have one as well. You, I, I would like to just keep the addition onto this category, which is, or Apple TV's The Dynasty Patriots docuseries <laughs> <laughs> that takes a radical new look at what we thought we knew. And that would be Dennis Peck, loving father, trying to repopulate Los Angeles. There, there he is. Uh-huh. And Dennis is just like, look, I was just trying to keep people together, you know? <laughs> Family is the most important B- thing. Bill Belichick is somehow to blame for yeah. Van Stretch's death. Exactly. You could recut this movie where Dennis Peck is actually the hero, because like, look, he was right. He wasn't fucking his wife. The wife says they're not fucking enough. Dennis Peck is actually trying to get these two crazy kids back together. Dennis Peck, the man. Well, and then you had the footage of Andy Garcia as a bad guy. Yeah. So you could, you know that Shining, where they have that Shining trailer where it's like a family comedy? Yes. Uh-huh. It's like Jack But Torrance. Dennis Peck just tries to go shake his hand. He flips out. My idea for a sequel is happening probably in the late 2000s, Peck's eight grown-up kids now terrorizing L.A. They're like a gang. <laughs> the Peck. All of them the have pecs, gone wrong. The Peck Peck squad. The Peck click. The Peck click. Peck click. They're just terrorizing all the rich neighborhoods in L.A., doing home invasions, yeah. and just killing right. people. Yeah. And then there's a monologue. My fucking dad, man. Yeah, he's he did this asshole. to us. Do you think they have like a, a TikTok house top. together and they're all like Content doing stunts house. and stuff? And they're like, yeah. no, nobody's going to do shit. The Peck's the Peck eight? <laughs> yeah. The Peck sect. Yeah. <laughs> Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hahn, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, Michael K. Williams, Raymond Ramon? Is it Ramon Raymond or Raymond Ramon? <laughs> JT Walsh, Byron Mayo, Harley Mays, or Philip Baker Hall? I think because it's about dirty cops, it can't be Wayne Jenkins. I think he's almost scandalized, but so I do think Byron would get pretty into this whole situation. <laughs> he's like, Dennis, Raymond, Kathleen. <laughs> Kenny, Heather, <laughs> Lolly, Key, Tova, Amy. Why don't we get some oysters from Wolfgang Puck and see what happens? It's a natural aphrodisiac. I have an unfinished house in Granada Hills. Just one big waterbed. Why don't we get some oysters killed me? Uh, <laughs> put some Worcestershire sauce on that oh man just one Oscar who gets it <laughs> it's gotta be gear it's gear bro. it's fucking gear it's fucking gear man gear for sure probably unanswerable questions is everyone's wife looking for strange mm. we'll never know <laughs> we'll all know Dennis Peck playing the, the scene yeah, yeah. I'm really proud of this one What's a fair price for shooting someone's rich parents in 1990? Well, we don't know what he actually got paid. Yeah, so what What was the price? What's the price range back then? It's I, 15 fi- grand for both parents. No, that's what he wanted. That was 7,500. And he's subcontracting it. Yeah. No, but Peck... So that means he's not because he's not taking home. No, five, it's 15. at least like 50K, right? You Maybe 75? Get you got to give 40 or $50,000. Yeah. I was thinking 75. Nine. Guy, did you see the guy's house? He's like a... 75,000. Giant compound. But I can't tell because like that house has all the covers on the furniture and it seems unlived in. So I couldn't tell like, did he buy that house after after his parents had been killed? Was that Neil Macaulay's house? It looks kind of like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did the other one I had. Do you have any answer, Russell? Uh, I just wanted to know where the the burger prostitute place was. Because you want to go there? I'm just curious. (laughs) Like, is it downtown you thought? I think it was downtown. Okay. Oh, I would have. I would have said because they serve pizza and pina coladas, so it's like a, I would have said that Beverly Boulevard part right before tons? it hits the one hundred and one. Oh, I when know. There's what you're like that about. giant intersection. And oh all yeah, these Alvarado hitting all these. Yeah. We should make a fictional LA hotspot crime map, map. like mm-hmm. BJ's on Alvarado from Heat, the Burger Hut from Internal Affairs, that Tommy's right over there where you said, but um, also like. Like a fucking little Tokyo area down there. Yeah. Why you see that place a lot of different shit? Chinatown. 
1990s movie LA is so much cooler than actual LA. LA. Do you think it would be cool if, since we have such a flexible work, you know, work from home, work from anywhere. Just go to locations? If I just started, like, working out of a parking lot of a burger joint <laughs> and you had to, like, come, if you wanted to talk to me, you had to, You're like, roll a giant up Pepsi? next to my car and I have a giant Pepsi. <laughs> Best double feature choice with this movie. This is easy. This deep cover. Deep cover was conceived as a sequel to this movie. You said that on on text. How? Uh, well, so Michael Tolkien and Henry Bean eventually like got involved with the writing of that movie, but it was initially like going to be an expansion of like internal affairs in Los Angeles. Interesting. Victoria Dillard's in that one very prominently. Yeah. yeah. I had bad influence just because this weird era that we're in now yeah. with like weird psycho sex movies. You know what I had? Basic Instinct. Hmm. Pretty good. Coded, basic instinct coded movie. The Indian Red Zwane Award, what happened the next day? How fast was the Raymond divorce, you think? Uh, they, it came lightning quick. There's no way those... Like two weeks later? There's no way they stay together, right? The darkest... The darkest... No kids. Hey, eventuality let's just cut this off. Is that he realizes that he has to be so out there to keep her interested and for the, the, the relationship to keep the juice. So he's like yeah. basically turns into Dennis. Right, which gets called out by the Dorian character. You're basically just like Dennis yeah. Bay. Mm. I don't know what piece of memorabilia I'd want from this movie. It could be a, a hard pass. <laughs> you don't want anything? What about the car? I like some of the polo shirts. I wouldn't mind going for an ice cold giant Pepsi I think right if now. you told somebody's over at your house, you're like, yeah, I got this from the movie Internal Affairs. <laughs> they just they're immediately like, think you're a maniac. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's the phone Van Stretch's wife was holding yeah, when she's right. riding Richard Gere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set worn. Coach Finstock Award. <laughs> Best life lesson. Your don't wife talk wants about to wives? get strange? Oh, I was going to say, don't talk about wives. Yeah. And then Gear wins the movie. Yeah. For sure. Craig? Craig, another one you hadn't seen. No, I'm so a, waiting a movie for this. that's older than Craig. Yeah, but yeah, 1990, right? No, yeah. Um, I'm fairly certain this is not the movie's intent, but I was just full rooting for Gear in this movie. Yeah, it's not the yeah, movie's it's intent. Not the movie's intent. You but know, it's it's understandable. Yeah, they they screwed it up. They they made Garcia too shitty and not not likable enough. There's like kind of nothing redeeming about him, and I just wanted more and more unhinged Gear. Gears. And the movie gets way better as it goes on. Because I, I honestly thought the first 30 minutes were a little slow. But the movie yeah. just, like, picks up momentum and slowly builds and gets more insane and more insane. Um, it feels intentional, right? I think that's why they... It's like a swerve. They started out traditionally, and then it just flips. I think I think the key to a great villain is they have to be super attractive. I think an attractive villain is the best kind of villain. Um, and I think Gear might be the apex of, like, hot bad guy. I wish he had mm. played a couple more bad guys. Yeah, it was sitting there for him. It was, you know what? It wasn't the thing to do in that era. Nah, you wanted to be the good guy. You wanted to be the good guy. It wasn't the thing to do in that era, man. Who? What bad guys did Bruce Willis play? Ever? Costner played zero bad guys other than No Way Out, if you count that as a bad guy. I don't really think Bruce Willis did play one. Yeah, it wasn't I like can't, I can't Tom Hanks certainly one. didn't. It's such a great turn. And, like, his sexual energy. Oh, in, like, Hearts War, like, eventually Bruce Willis is a bad guy. But, like... Harrison Ford did What's Lie, What Lies Beneath. Uh-huh. He was a bad guy in that kind of... That was the first one where he's like, well, he's oh, also man, like, look at like, Harrison this Ford. This guy could be bad, but It's some of the be best, like, performances. Like, even, like, the little minute in Interstellar when Matt Damon's, like, a piece of shit. Like, yeah. I just... I he like, does that well, though. Some of the best Damon. Damon's... I think Damon's a better bad guy than a good guy. Yeah, he does. He does yeah. that actually pretty well. He's, he's a great bad but guy. But there's no sexual energy anymore. And, like, I feel like... There is no, like, sexual electricity in most of, like, the male leads now. Like, Gear ha has something about him, and I feel like a lot of the older movies, oh like, God, Harrison Ford. Got to Craig. Nowadays, yeah. it's like... It really did. Damn. Dennis Pitt got to Craig. He, Craig's been peck-pilled. Craig, <laughs> yeah. like, Dennis Pitt got Craig's, to Craig. Craig's Jesus their first Christ. night of cuck cop. These guys <laughs> are all... Friday night. <laughs> These guys are all sterile now, all these actors, man. <laughs> Listen to you. Like, 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 he's made you rethink an entire generation yeah. of actors. Like, Chris Evans is, like, like it, built in a laboratory. He yeah, like, he never could have been Compared to up. Peck. Could call Craig. You know, <laughs> you know who could be Peck now? Gosling. Yeah. Oh, Gosling yeah. If he wanted it. to. Yeah. Gosling, yeah. If Gosling wanted to be, Gosling could Has be Has Gosling Peck. played a bad guy? Uh... Uh, yeah, for yeah in, um, is he bad in Place Beyond the Pines? No, nah. he's good. He's, he's, he's good. got a heart of gold. In he's got a heart of gold. 
That's yeah, what we should have done for he's, recasting he's a, Couch. He's a crime dude, but he's got a heart of gold. Who are, who are the two leads Gosling now? plays a serial Gosling killer in that Sandra Bullock. Movie, Gosling right? is the perfect Oh, pick. shit, yeah. What, yeah. Is, what is it? Uh, what's it called? Frail? No, that's the frailty is the one with Anthony Hopkins. The one where he's, yeah, the two kids are in that one where he plays a serial killer. That's like one of his Murder yeah. by ones. Numbers. Murder by Numbers. Yeah. It's actually a good movie. That was like right after Remember the Titans, though, wasn't it? Yeah. That's him on the way up. How did, uh, I have one question. How did Peck get Kathleen's underwear, or was it not her underwear? It was, but it I was. think he just broke it and just went to that crib. He, he broke it and stole yeah. her underwear. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's dead they as didn't have simply safe back then. I was gonna say, do you think you'd? This is we could maybe cut this, but do you think you'd recognize <laughs> your wife's underwear? Uh, Boy, I tell you what, Dennis Peck has Craig asking all. Kinds honestly, of Craig, I would probably just be so keyed into the idea that this guy was saying that like, he had my wife. When underwear. Raymond saw the underwear, was he like, "Oh, that is Kathleen's underwear"? Like, it, would you know well, immediately? But, <laughs> but he does when he sees her after. He's trying to see if she has underwear on. Yeah, and he sits her down. He's like, "Come here, come here, sit down." He's, he's trying to so like inappropriate. Check out. <laughs> it's yeah. so inappropriate in that scene. I just wonder if, like, nope. how would you recognize that immediately, or would you have to be like, "I have no idea." Do you know what the the real takeaway is? Like, you're right. In this movie, Peck really, really, really is the man compared to <laughs> he is, bro. It is, bro. It's kind of like a whole like Black Panther Killmonger thing yeah. to where you leave. And you know what? <laughs> Honestly, he talks shit to the very end. It's right. Right. That's <laughs> the best thing. Is it's like it's like even it would be like a UNLV team that was losing by twenty, and it's just like, hey, fuck you. Just so you know, we only we still got you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and one of the best, like, I love the trope of like the bad guy who just flexes his muscles, and he's like, I'm just gonna terrorize Raymond for like thirty minutes of this movie, yeah. and, and I'm gonna use everything I have in my wheelhouse to ruin your life. And the, it's great. The, the guy walks in on Pet fucking his wife, and looks at him like. Like, like, doesn't even, like, like yeah. this guy's crazy. Like, like yeah. doesn't even fuck. It's not even like, oh shit, let me put this thing away. He's like, huh, the fuck. best thing is that the, the, his dying words are like, I just love my kids. So much. <laughs> yeah, what was that? He was like erotically. He's like, I just, once you have children. kids, everything changes. I was like, what does that mean? You just like you have to fuck every woman in Los Angeles because you had kids. Wow, heck, everything changes. Everything changes, Jim. <laughs> <laughs>